jo rejoin the roster. Uh, I don't know if it's going to cut it, but see what these bands look like. So far, the same. Quirky also removed or moving over too many engaged champions to D+. Uh, Lucid on a 16-game winning streak on Vi. 16 uh, I'm experiencing deja vu. Here for Sejuani Jax coming through, so... But it's not supposed to happen the way that we saw it happen. All right, so they want to focus on getting Morgan ahead in the top side. Just kind of get the engage. Wasn't able to, to handshake his way out of it. Going on from playing a now they're going to ban the, the Renata. Nico, I recommend it. <laughs> it yeah. was a problem. So there were names crying. The pick, uh, oh, do it. Yeah, now they're going to play Poppy into uh, the Jax, which the makes Jax sense. Was banned last Lord. game. And you have a bard. For the Jacks, for the Sejuani, for cutting off retreat paths here. What's Showmaker gonna do? Bard's kind of weird, though. The bard is a little weird. There's not a good, like, low mobility target to hit with Bardle. Is he gonna hit anybody with Bardle? Wow, that's a that's a huge value Silas pick because you can steal Bardle as well. Poppy can just simply turn the fight into a 5v3 if she can have a great ultimate around an objective. So this is a, a really nice composition here for D plus once again. The old Jax Azir scale into Ezreal has been an old Yeah, the Bard ult really has low value here, I think. We'll see if he if he can use it. Yeah. Like she used to. Question mark do it. I want to mention that yesterday Redside won five out of five games. And today is one for one, as D-plus did take that. Always have to keep in mind that it might depend on the matchups and the teams, but we also had Genji versus T1 yesterday. So that, that was a very even match that went three games. And is Bard any good for cucking the uh, Vi engage? Yeah, but you'd have to ult the target that Vi is ulting, which would allow the enemy team to close distance. So... Sometimes in the early parts uh, maybe. Of the season, especially if you have a lot of two zeros, which, as you mentioned, we had a three-gamer yesterday. Um, you know, one side will continually win because the losing team will pick the same side and lose again um, because there is a skill mismatch, right? But I don't know if uh, I'm ready to, to say it's a it's red being better yet, but I'm not also ready to rule it out. So uh, let's, let's keep our eyes on it yeah. still. The way I was thinking about it yesterday... Um, is that with the sides relatively even now having counter pick feels even stronger uh, because in this meta there are a lot of strong picks so both sides can kind of um, you know get a lot of strong picks for themselves there's not one champion that absolutely breaks the game and if there is they just get banned away so yeah feels like red side in a pretty good spot for now um, this Ezreal Bard lane definitely has a nice amount of poke, but it feels pretty well negated by the Rakan, as you can see. Kellen just lands a Q, trades it with Envy, and now they're ahead on health. So you're not going to have that early uh, lane pressure like you did from the Callista Renata anymore. Yeah, nor will you have the same type of pressure you could with the uh, Ezreal Karma, where you could just AoE the, the lane and just continually push Yeah, this Bard back. feels super it's weird here. Large advantages in that way. Um, obviously, Bard can negate some of that trading as well with his heals here he's placed on the ground. But as you mentioned, still health advantage here to D-plus. will just catch this under turret. Uh, this is the 19th game that Envy has played of Ezreal. I, I definitely associate him with a champion, but he's sitting a, a pretty low win rate, about 7 and 11. So just under 50 here. And this is a champion that you mentioned earlier. Hasn't been the most impactful for quite some time. You know, just doesn't have the big oomph that a lot of the other AD carries can have. Where they have a, a front line to protect them and they just wail on you. He's much more reliant on getting that attack speed up and obviously hitting a bunch of mystic shots in a fight. And if he can't actually pull that off, or if he is just simply uh, chunked out before he can really do anything, then, you know, the impact is much smaller. But if you're winning the fight, you've got that scaling Azir to kind of chip away at health bars. Ezreal can be a fantastic finisher does scale really well does have a lot of mobility into a composition like this so yeah while i don't hate it um i'm also not that enthusiastic about it here either and we'll see what envy can pull off on it obviously has a lot of experience it's the second most played champion yeah it does feel like bro are kind of taking a step back after game one and they say okay we're gonna try to scale up a bit as you've mentioned yeah i really like the poppy uh, top here kind of goes against i mean i we should be seeing it more it's a great flex pick which is one of the reasons why it's frequently banned in this meta between top and jungle, but it also just has such good value against Jax in particular, but... 
against a lot of Breon's composition, the W is going to be really good. And it, it's just always good at the professional level because you can get man advantages by using Poppy ult well and just secure objectives for free. And it has been a quite quiet early game here. King in. King in steadfast. And it has been a quite quiet. It's coming out. Really, King in? And all that. And it has been a quite. Quiet you don't feel like using W to stop here. that? Okay. King in will steadfastly get counterstruck. Lucy will be seen by this ward. And uh, see if he decides to come. No, he's just waiting for the respawn. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I was like, I'm wow, fine. does he have an insane game sense? He's like, hold on, let me get a path a little bit up. No, he's yeah, no, he's just, just gonna for drugs. <laughs> just gonna farm his jungle again. I mean, he got the bottom side scuttle crab. He immediately just went to the top side after buying. It's been a lot slower than our last series. And ready to continue scaling. Once they at level six, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of kill pressure with Silas Vi specifically. Like those two could absolutely get in there and. Pretty much kill anyone, maybe even look for a bottom side dive as well. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see what D plus have in store because I think the onus is on them, surely, to try to make some maneuvers uh, earlier on in the game, at least in the mid game. What you can do also with Silas is steal Bard's ultimate, disable the turret, and then set up the dive that way. And it can be very impactful once Lucid has level six. So there's a lot of tools here, guys. You can also, of course, just steal Emperor's Divide and, and do a, a dive set up with that. Is this time. We'll see the avoid on the attempt here from Kellen. Arcane shift going to be great at that one. Gideon taking his opportunity here to take these void grubs. The should, be, should be free, uh, though, on the dragon. Okay. Steven, Steven, and Stefan. Yes. So, yeah. Um, all variants. Yeah. And I think this is fine, especially as we saw in game number one. You can get all six, and they just don't do anything if you're not able to uh, utilize uh, T1 them. So used them very well, instead, I think. Just get the dragons. We know they're strong. And you're going to be feeling pretty good. I think they can definitely have a high value if you play around those six stacks of the Void Grub. But bad teams may not be able to set up those those pushes properly. We just want these dragons. Worked out last game. Level six, here we go. Emperor's Divide not going to hit anything. Karis just doesn't even have to flash. Just shuffles away. So, so much for that early game potential. Yeah, unfortunately. not level six yet. Nope. Uh, a wave is going to crash into Envy's turret here with his back timing to grab a tier. What do I think about Grubbies for Drake trades? Seems like sub bad teams follow the trap of getting with no split push potential champs. Yeah, I think it's it depends on the value. Like with the Jacks, it probably does have pretty good value in this composition. The value for the Grubs are much higher for Breon than for D+. <laughs> Because they have like a melee mid laner. Like maybe Silas can get some value out of split pushing, but D Plus's comp is more built for fighting around Drake and Baron. And so for them, you know, getting an early Drake actually is going to force fights a, a lot sooner around those objectives where they can really make the most out of like Poppy Ult, you know, and the AoE CC from Rakan. So I think if you're D Plus, you'll take this trade. Because you've really accelerated the game, the game pace now around the Drake. If they can beat this, getting a little bit further away. No real vision here outside of the brush. Kellen going to check that out right now. The blue side tri brush also lacking vision. Aiming will toss one in there. Doesn't see Sejuani, but it's a back from Lucid. They're not going to commit. So many opportunities for near. When I'm doing the talk show with Dominic and D God uh, next Wednesday, Power Spike is coming back. and not able to do anything at level six and you know what that means it's going back to his krugs yeah he's gonna farm that jungle can't wait okay nice little play from showmaker just gonna be a trade you would imagine as morgan just gonna be bopped away here king and does take two turret shots maybe more yep. gideon level six himself that's some getting real down and dirty trying to grab a plate um Crash that way, not going to be able to secure the I missed the weekly T1 Rust, excited for it to come back. Yeah, it'll be fine. What is a power spike? What power are you spiking? Well, it's like a, you know, it's a game term that, that makes sense. Your power level is spiking at a certain point in time. You know? 
like, you know, this this early game has been very quiet compared to our last, you know, in a lot of ways. Because mm -hmm. I use words that have like meanings and make sense. That. One objective traded top side for bro, bottom side for D+. Plus. Next, Stevens up in 60 seconds here is Gideon is seen on this ward. Yeah, not a lot of uh, movement from the mid laners, though, so... How's Cutie Pie doing these days? Is he still streaming? We might have had action, but we're not going to, in fact. So I'm just going to go back to farming my jungle. Little bro and Do you hear the LCK casters naming the grubs Kevins? Well, they've been naming them Stevens today. They're changing their names every day. I don't know. I have yet to hear the, the definitive grub, na grub name. And the mid game. And sometimes the late game. So, uh, streaming TFT hit jam. Wow, nice. Zooming in. He's got the zoomies. Envy in a little bit of trouble, but there's the He's a funny guy. Gonna buy some time aiming full health. That ult is just gonna sail wide. Here's so Lucid. Is going to look for this kill as Lucid sets him up. That's first blood. Aiming though, it's gonna see a Sejuani and DK Whoops. taking too long with this play as Gideon gets in position and Oh! It's a double kill. First the flash. Though, Gideon played that well. And DK have taken too long with this play as Gideon gets in position. Oh, he cued him to get in front of him during the. Over the wall. It's a By Q. For yeah, double kill for Gideon. That's going to make this Sejuani a little bit tankier. Would have liked to have it on the Ezreal, obviously, but Envy was picked first. But a strange commitment here is all Morgan. Uh, he doesn't want to get flashed on, so King and Will commit to his flash first. Nicely done for Morgan. <laughs> Three Greek so Pantheon one. names? Why, why would they be named after well, the, the Greek Pantheon? To kill an Ezreal, you know, is Pretty tough to pull that one off since he does have the arcane shift. Teleport going to come through here for Showmaker, but it's still going to be plate gold split here. I think that they should just do an in-game sponsorship. The the Grubhub Grubs. What is that? What is that thing? Riot's not uh, Riot's not selling enough sponsorships inside the game itself. So Kelly, That's my opinion. He's feeling great about how that, that first one went from his first knockup in game one. But, uh, Bartle has a lot of value. This true shot barrage missing. Oh. It's a little bit painful. Um, yeah, it is kind of painful. But, you know, everyone is human. Everyone makes mistakes. Lucid's going to eat that extra turret shot. And Gideon is here. Nothing else they can do. Lucid's going to get slowed and then taken out here. The flash follows. Oh. Magical journey. There was no way. Still had the Q. I actually hadn't used that cooldown the whole time. For D plus, it's Sejuani picking up two kills. Not an Ezreal, not an Azir. Yeah, still That's what players have been calling them in, in Champs Q. What? The Grubhub Grubs? <laughs> could eventually lead to them taking this dragon down. I do kind of doubt that Bro would commit to it, though, for some reason. I don't know. They haven't really had a lot of luck around the Drake. It doesn't matter if they if they don't look tasty, guys. They deliver a delicious buff to your team. And it, it, it's just the, how iconic it would be, right? Oh. What? 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 Why did Effort use Magical Journey? But aiming just walks it off. And <laughs> magical journey. What? What were they gonna? Call? Seriously? Seriously? So, how? Do, riddle me this. Take this one, take a look. I mean, how do you kill this guy? Bro, how do you kill this guy? You. This guy is fucking Sejuani. He only has this for damage. He has no ultimate. He used it in the last engagement and bot. So what happens, my question is this, what happens if you magical journey through here with this guy and this guy right here? Do you kill him? He has flash. Right? You have your Ezreal here, but this guy's getting away. And your Azir here. Actually committing to this. So, like, why not just kill Kellen? As there's the ult from effort, but aiming just walks it off, and magical journey actually just gets Kellen to safety. So Everett is trolling, man. Have to use his ultimate himself, and now Showmaker <laughs> makes his way over, not gonna hit the knockup on the Karis. And now we just have you. It, there is no Sejuani ulti. It's down. It's on cooldown. Messiness and action. It's up now. Around the dragon. Very awkward. Karis has to stay in the pit. The rest of the team has to come up. He has to flash. Karis has to flash, but it's perfect because oh. Kellen's going to go down. Nice snipe this time around from Envy. 
That's the Rakan just gone. Kellen going a little bit too ham, but now the TP comes in and loses it. Gets in underneath that one, but he's in a bit of trouble as well. They need some damage. King in making his way in with the teleport. Morgan as well, a little bit late, but perfect timing perhaps as he is looking for more. Flashes in, nearly able to take down Lucy, but maybe he went too far himself. And what is happening? Down Showmaker. It's a double kill for Karis, and it will be the dragon to bro. <laughs> Looks like the drag, the dragon, uh, 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 luck is changing. Amy. Oh boy. <laughs> down Showmaker, a little bit late, but a little bit too happy. He must have. All right, let's go back. There's the ult from effort, but Aiming just walks. So they do troll. They don't have Rakan ult for engage. Remember that. Aiming doesn't have ult either. He steals the zero. Ult. Poppy uses ult here. Now I don't know why Poppy is using ult. Why is Poppy using ult? I guess he Poppy uses ult just so that he can get a faster recall, so that he has a he has a faster TP. But the TP isn't quite up yet. So he actually the timing on here is not perfect because he wants the TP right now. So Kellen goes in. Remember, Kellen doesn't have ult. Flash out. The timing is just That's tragic. Just There's now it's up. Ooh. Morgan as well, a little bit late, but perfect timing perhaps as he is looking for more. Flashes in, nearly able to take down Lucy, but maybe he went too far himself as now they're chasing down Showmaker. It's a double kill for Karis, and it will be the Dragon to bro. Looks like the, drag, the Dragon uh, League, uh, luck is changing. Amy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get an exit kill, but what a bizarre set of plays here. Unfortunately, 4D plus Kellen. You know, trying to go deep there, trying to make that uh, that pick onto the Azir happen, but then caught by a great true shot barrage from NB, redeeming himself for one that went just a little bit wide on that. He TP's in a half HP. Yeah, I, he was trying to get the faster TP, but unfortunately, the TP timers were just like really bad from both from both teams. Like it was not ideal for the start of that engagement, right? And Rakan didn't have ult. He flashes though. He still got that. And then the true shot barrage lands the kill. And then we see a commitment here to a lot of teleport. Showmaker is zoned out by this Emperor's Divide. Can't really get in range to get a big one himself. Uh, King and also just doesn't land Poppy Stun because of. Was it? Range to get a big one himself. Arcane and Shift. Journey allows him to avoid Showmaker's ult here. And then Morgan is super decisive. Takes out King and. Or rather, uh, takes out Lucid. Could have been worse, though. And if Morgan had been able to uh, <laughs> TP sooner or TP with more life. I mean, by the way, he did have plenty of time in order to heal up. He did. He just chose to stay in lane. He absolutely could have healed. The uh, magical journey allows him to avoid Showmaker's ult here. And then Morgan is super decisive. Takes out King in, or rather, uh, takes out Lucid. And, uh, sorry, I'm saying all the top players' <laughs> names wrong. Takes out the poppy, then they're able to chase Lucid away, and then yeah. aiming decides he's going to actually scan and look for a kill here on... Am I still like, sponsored by eSports Bet? I do not have an active yeah. eSports Bet sponsorship. Um, why? But we are talking to them for LFN about next year. Um, they've been a very good partner to us. In the lead, five to three. They've got the gold lead. They have a dragon. They could even look for these six void bubs. And if you have some momentum, you can actually utilize them to put some pressure on the turrets and get some map control. Now, Showmaker's alone. Yeah. Doesn't have flash. Can't uh, hijack his ear ult either. Should still be on cooldown from the last fight. Yeah. Looks like they're not going to commit to this though. Void bubs do despawn. On kill Void Grubs. Yeah, unfortunate. Rip Steven. Uh, one of my favorite sponsors to work with, <laughs> Esports Bets. All our sponsors are good. Man. Trolley's great. Never had a chance to be taken. You know, hope they come back this year. Uh, the only later on. Um, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I like the products that we here, have for, from our sponsors. Like, it worked out. You know, I like HelloFresh. Uh, I like uh, Liquid IV. The Jax is going to be a problem. Um, King and 
can't solve with that auto, unfortunately. And Maybe force finished here for Jax. Yeah, I mean, he's, ah, he's you want to start betting with the season start? Yeah, yeah, huge, they're good. Difficult to kill. Front to back on this next the trolley freeze here. pipe combo is pretty low. Yeah, it's pretty good. Freeze pipe was great too. I don't know. We've had we've had good sponsors. I mean, we we don't take we don't take sponsors that we don't think uh, vibe with us. You know what I mean? And bro, they have Karis teleport. They could just kind of see if they can group up and start this one up. We'll see. Kingen's backing. He does not have teleport. There's a bit of a window of opportunity here. Am I looking for hardware sponsors? Sure, yeah. We take some hardware sponsors. They finally will. It's the bro way to do it. We'll slow, we'll slow, but slow and steady wins the race, you know. They had to take a sip of their brew, you know. It's bro and brew. So they the hand was off the mouse for just a little bit. And then they go up and uh, they're ready to finally take the sound loose. It is nearby. He has King in as well. See the black lever here taken. Will this might come in? And the poppy. Oh, the the, the, the poppy value is so crazy, dude. I fucking love poppy at the pros level. Didn't even have to fight. So nope. good. Just show up with Poppy, press R, spin that helicopter, and Rift Herald acquired. That's all it takes. Not much else. <laughs> LFN Bad Dragon sponsor. Yeah. I've made jokes about that uh, before. Although, I will say that right, um, well, I would not be able fast. to give a personal uh, testimonial about Bad Dragon. <laughs> two seconds would have made. Actually, pretty pretty Because there ain't no way I'm shoving one of those things in me. All right. Shot. <laughs> a little bit of shield damage there. Nice, nice. Hey, send out this wave. Should be able to push it and get it and get a free back off, you know? Every Ezreal knows that moment. Poppy is a super well divide design champion. Nice. Yep. And, I, I love uh, Poppy. I think she's great. Streak, 55 seconds, fell is. I mean, teleport counter is still the same. Seji, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. No doubt you subbed. Here with the mental image of me using a bad dragon. Yeah. <laughs> and then to the relevant... I remember that. <laughs> that was a great moment of silence on the rip. As, uh, uh, yeah, King <laughs> I was two there. seconds away from Googling yeah. bad dragon on my uh, work PC. Do not do that. Um, you can see this Use your phone. <laughs> and a VPN. <laughs> and uh, an incognito tab. Yeah, we, uh, we need to see what's happening down with the... the Dude, I would love to get a bad dragon sponsorship though, and then do a, a bad dragon segment on Power Spike every week where we pick the worst dragon attempt. Wow, they really fucked themselves with that bad dragon. <laughs> Be so good. Looking for a scoop. Yeah, bro, looking for this. Gideon just gonna throw his ultimate in there, trying to open up this turret, really. And it is a big committal. I mean, they're continuing on this one. Aiming is going to be forced to Featherstorm, but we got a TP coming in. Can Showmaker get anything done? Doesn't look likely, but he is going to steal at least the ultimate of the Sejuani. We got a little angle being taken right now on the left side. Yeah, losing. <laughs> Don, which one do you think would fit better in the T1 fan so base? Difficult to actually utilize the Sejuani uh, here for Showmaker and Bro are still going to be. I can't believe that's a real dragon. company. Effort alone won't be able It's pretty great show, though. though. Is he gonna go to the I, pit? I wouldn't use no, one myself, but I, you know, it makes me happy to know that they so exist and that somehow they make money. No Rift Herald drag racing just yet. Um, now, bro, a little bit uh, smothered against this wall, but that's gonna be fine. Just backing away. Really. Uh, are there sponsors here? that you automatically refuse yeah. due to the nature of the products? Yeah, we've turned some down. Um, just because they didn't feel right for us or for the audience. Um, and we don't want to get into a position where we are trying to, you know, tell you guys to buy things that we wouldn't use ourselves or that we don't believe in. Do anything to turn the play around and they just can't get prio due to that push into Or like doesn't seem like a right fit. Plus, end up losing another Drake here. It's Ocean Soul this time around, so not the high impact that it was uh, last game in terms of Cloud Soul that would have been amazing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, his effort and Kellen are going to duel. Showmaker nearby. Oh, boy. Effort decides, okay, I really need my chimes, and he is... Oh, he's going. going. Showmaker's away. going. He get away with his chimes, and now Kellen in a little bit of trouble. As Showmaker and Kellen nearly able to 2v3 that one. The series has been a, yeah, a bit of a fiesta. Away, and DK don't really use much in the trade. I mean, Jax gets a lot of agency out of this. I think D plus need to try to make something happen down here because this might end up being a lot of turret damage. Is Brian just like a Jimmy's Lord Morgan split push team now? Oh no, Morgan's here. These dives have been so shit. 
cars. He goes down and now Amy Doesn't matter though because Poppy exists. Himself. Showmaker looking for the divide. Envy Envy's dead. No E remaining and he flashes just to die as the rest of the team had already jumped ship. And DK's dive actually does work out. Yeah, I mean, Keegan has teleport <sighs> remain. Dive might actually work out. They're going in on the car. He goes down and now aiming has to go into stasis himself. Showmaker looking for the divide. Envy. The Bard stasis no is just kind of canceled out by the Poppy ult, though, because it lasts less time. So aiming's right back in the mix. Ship. And DK's dive actually does work out. Yeah. I mean, with no E remaining and he flashes. Actually work the lucid flash. Yeah, TP's coming in and the ult does go in onto Karis. They want to come into this, but the arm guard is it's completed, guys. He's able to stasis and now this dive. Where did he so flash to? This, but the arm guard. TP. Yeah, TP's. Oh. <laughs> to try to make something happen down here because this might end up being a lot of turret damage. TP. Yeah, TP. <laughs> he flashes while TP's ulting. In the ult did he have turret aggro? This might end up being a lot of turret damage. TP. Yeah, TP's coming in and the ult. Oh, that's weird. Go in onto Karis. They want to come into this, but the arm guard is. I haven't seen that before. Guys, he's able to stasis and now this dive might actually work out. They're going in on the cars. He goes down and now aiming. Style point. Flashes himself. the wall so while buffering his R. Envy with no e I, remaining and he I could see that if you were like trying to drop turret aggro, maybe, but I don't know what the point of that was. DK's dive actually does work out. Yeah, I mean. Kingen has teleport too, so you know if you try if you try to play that game of chicken, you know D plus will pull the trigger first and go in on you. Jax decides to come down and try to save the play. He fails. He loses side lane pressure top side. You lose your AD carry. You lose the Azir, and this is a huge win for D plus. Tried to dodge Sajar, maybe. Here. Massive, massive win. Yeah, he could have been trying to dodge a skill shot. That's true. Has a huge bounty on his head. We saw what he was able to do with this champion in game one. And things are looking a little bit worse for wear here now for Bro. As you watch this play here, they think that with the teleport coming through, maybe they can pull this off. But Lucid just buffers this with his ultimate on the re-engage. Arm guard is done. But there's just not enough damage output here for the side of Bro. Once the Azir is dead, Envy comes over here. He's like, maybe I could, maybe I could do this. And even with the E, the arcane shift. No, I've never seen that stun, that so Vi mechanic before. That was super weird. Taken out. So. Everybody comes down in a what felt half hard. He, he flashes the, Sedge E proc because he's on three quarters. Is that what happened? Bro, as you watch this okay, there we go. Here, it's hard to see it. Teleport yeah, yeah, okay, he is. Yeah. Coming through. Maybe they can pull this off, but Lucid just buffers this with his ultimate. I'm not sure that was necessary, Arcar though. Done, but there's just not enough damage output here for the side of Bro. Because remember, he can just press R and he's unstoppable. So here now for bro as you watch this play here they think that you know what i mean like he's already unstoppable at this point so we're coming through maybe they can pull this off but lucid just buffers this with his ultimate yeah i don't the there's no point guard is done but there's just not enough damage output here i have no idea of bro once he is here is dead envy comes over here he's like maybe i could maybe i could do this and even with the as long as he presses the r before uh sejuani presses e he should so be fine Anyways, and taken out. So yeah, I think I think it was just silly. That. <laughs> so I think it was either a mistake or a huge win for I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, I mean, just like that, aiming is back in the driver's seat. Three kills, two and a half items. Not quite as fed as the last game, I guess, because he had four kills and maybe a bit more farm. He's doing quite well for himself this game. Anyway, he's got 20 or 230. It's now Gideon trying to get a scuttle crab. He does, but he loses his flash. So, dude, this is this is just like Lord Morgan PVE all. team now. Feel great. And be, you know, it's close to getting that Muramata completed, just a few stacks away. But competing with this Aya right now just feels so awful when you have such a big front line to deal with. On top of it all, and you know you can e away from a lot of engages, but if Lucid presses R, you're gonna get hit. <laughs> you have to stay away from. You have to play keep away, which means the main damage dealer for the majority of these fights is gonna be Karas, at least for the outset of the fight. He looks to engage. And Bring die. back Umti. I know, man. Like Umti was a big loss for this team. I wish Umti had, had, had stayed in LCK, but he does give me a reason to watch TL at least at the you know, beginning and see how he's doing. Year, I think he'll be better than Pioshik on that here. roster. For bro. But the problem is, is that I have to watch TL while they have those carries.
Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if you I mean, the mid and 80 carry situation just so like dire for that team that it feels doomed. Try to scale out of this one, but for some reason, it just feels like the wind has been taken out of their sails. Like every lane now going to the side of DK. Yes, they have a lot of power here in this mid game with this composition, and they are utilizing it. But if I'm bro, just try to hold on and, and don't get too demoralized at this point. It has been a couple of unfor unfortunate fights but no need to send it on the next Ocean Drake, I'd say. I mean, I think this goes back to the Ezreal conversations. We're gonna hold our thought on this. Maybe aiming for the ult. Yeah, trade of ults. It's actually very it's a good trade. Um, if you are effort to get that one done, and now we're teleporting in Is it? for the Ocean Drake. <laughs> yeah, he just picked up Zonia. He still has two sums. Oh, like, I feel for as though for it's not that big of a deal. Really critical fight here for Bro. This TP, okay, he's just going top lane. You can see that bro don't really, or rather DK don't really care about this Ocean Drake. And I think that's fine. Just try to continue to push with your mid game lead and give up one Ocean Drake. That's totally fine. Get a bunch of gold. Yeah, I don't know. Effort down. must know yeah. the dirty I secrets mean, of the Breon organization to continue to be paid as a pro player Sunday's on this roster. Control, you can't tell me there's not another better support available. Just says, I'll take a turret instead. Uh, and so our bro going to take the Drake or. Um, are we just hanging out? Now this is very unlike the bro of old. We know how much bro likes to drag and secure, but uh, without Umpty maybe, uh, but less interested. Saying, all right, I see you don't want an Ocean Drake. We don't want it I'll tell you what, guys. I know, I know what it is. Uh, Effort knows who the LCK commissioner is. No one else knows who the LCK commissioner is. Effort does, though. So he's able to blackmail to stay in the LCK. He knows they the LCK know commissioner's true identity. But they don't have any vision on it. The ping does come in as there's the ult. He's going to knock effort away, which doesn't do much. But now trying to get on to Gideon here, who is quite tanky after those early kills. But he is alone, just trying to jump ship himself. A lot of damage coming out from the Ezreal, actually, and those Azir soldiers. So DK not going to commit to going any further. Yeah. Lucky for Gideon, he has that... Uh that many resistances in his inventory <laughs> Is that just fake right away? We, well, we never know who the who the LCK commissioner is. Even the teams, when they release an official letter, just refer to the LCK commissioner. It's weird that this person doesn't have a name or, like, an identity. Spin his way into the fight to uh, secure that, as we saw last time. Ultimate down, some tools invested here. Going back to the Ezreal conversation, though, uh, Valdez, you know, it feels like a lot of the time, if you do end up catching someone with Gideon's ult or Morgan gets a Counter-Strike, the damage isn't there for Ezreal just yet. He needs a lot more time to do larger damage numbers. <laughs> uh, Morgan is going to cancel his back as he is spotted. Has to flash away from Kingen. Kind of unfortunate. That's now another flash taken away from Bro. Yeah, that's a really nice play there. Good game sense. Control ward expended to get a flash. That's massive. You know, very well played. It's a really critical flash because to follow up on Gideon's ult, like we've talked about, or to try to set up a big Emperor's Divide with a Counter-Strike. The Flash is an amazing tool. It gives you that extra range, that extra distance. You won't have it anymore. And now, D-plus posturing on Baron, King and against the comp of Bro, because, I mean, aiming is supremely fed. He already has his LDR as well. Uh, the Silas is gonna scale well along. So D-plus also taking their time. No rush for them. They don't overcommit for the Ocean Drake or anything like that. Unfortunately, that does mean we are kind of hanging out once again, uh, just waiting for some action. Effort trying to lead the charge here a little bit. You can see Gideon as well looking for anyone out of position. Yeah, I mean, he certainly could set up for a pick as Lucid also threatening Envy. Caught. Uh, yeah, he's just going to maybe die. <laughs> he's going to go down. Envy just take. Well, Perfect's debut has been better. What can I say? As Lucid also threatening Envy. <laughs> Caught. Uh, yeah. He's just gonna he gets Ejwani ulted and then focused down by Envy. Takes him out as uh, the team not there together and Lucy going way too far forward by himself. Maybe he tried to start a 4v5 engagement there. The Miss Poppy was on the other side of the map. Hit with reality in the face. And, and Jax TPing. There and Lucy going way too. It also threatening Envy. Caught. Uh, yeah, he's just gonna maybe die. <laughs> he's gonna go down. Envy just takes him out as uh, the team not there. now, bro. 5v4. Setting up for the Baron. I wouldn't go that far, but the team definitely wasn't behind him. They were a bit split, as you said, and Morgan 
Now just gonna come back here to mid. Yeah, Brienne doesn't want to throw the game right now because they can still wait two and a half minutes to try and get Ocean Soul. Showmaker also missed his stolen Sejuani ult. Tempered fate, unable to follow up either. And even if he wasn't, there's just too much distance between your damage dealers here on D plus and the carry you try to execute as Lucid. And unfortunately, he gets punished in a big way um, for his misjudgment there. I mean, the ability for Bro's composition to kite back is is A plus or better. I mean, you, you can just hold a line. His ear can always put up a wall. Ezreal is one of the best champions at doing it. Bard can buy a lot of time. And so if you're going to engage, it has to be Chris. Now, DK, they say, we're just going to do Baron. And they might just be able to do it. I mean, they haven't seen the amount of damage and Gideon goes flying in his... And so if... Unfortunately, we have a replay here, which is a little weird. How did Breon lose so much map pressure when they were a man up on the map? And unfortunately... He gets punished in a big way um, for his misjudgment there. I mean, the ability. Like, I get that Morgan used TP, but they have to actually acquire map pressure as a result of his play. So they're just going to instantly TP. Morgan starts running up. But they're on the Baron with no vision. Like, they know what's going on, they know everything that's going on. Bard has no ult. Effort. Also threatening envy. Caught. Uh, yeah, he's... That Bartle is still down from this fight. They just be able to do it. I mean, they haven't seen... So they can't buy time to get Jax there. Goes flying in his... And then he hits the he hits the Sejuani. Free for the side of SB Chris. Now DK, they say we're just gonna do Baron. And they might just be able to do it. I mean they haven't That's really nice. That's really nicely done by D Plus though. So the coordination, because Kellen is marking the Sejuani. And you see the poppy peel off immediately. Kellen forces the Q, and then it's free. And now Bro trying to punish them for that one, but D plus they say, okay, we'll just run away from this one. No punish comes in. They don't have their Sejuani, and no engage allows them to do anything. He gets out. The rest of the disengaging players to the left, supported by that control ward there. Uh, in the jungle, uh, you don't get Vi having one. It's a very cheap item and make sure you have total coverage, especially get versus like Jax, Ezreal, and Azir. The slow attack speed can be very meaningful. The end result is really nothing changes. D plus still have the faster group here. They're still in the better position in this game and at least bro have a two drake buffer right now to where this is not going to be a tragic loss for them one single ocean drake going over the scaling continues there's you know azir on that zone is obviously sitting on three items of the crypt loop and stir gun okay and is chasing him down here and i spawn gauntlet you got frozen heart i mean this I, even the Jax is going to take pretty much forever to kill King and uh, he's poppy alongside of just an insane amount of armor right now. It's like you're, you're just not going to kill him. I feel like the only person who can actually deal damage to him is uh, probably Karis. This is a very nice setup though. Amy and a lot just side of just an insane amount of armor. Didn't right feel now. like, like ult, you're, you're ulting or him. flashing like that. The person who can actually deal damage to him is. Uh, probably Karis. This is a very nice setup, though. Aiming in a lot of trouble. Is not going to get stunned up, though, and he doesn't even have to oh, of course. Storm. Very Lord confident of aiming there. that his team was going to so be there. He blocks everything. He just says, no, I don't care. I'm just going to block everything. There is no follow-up here. There is nothing you can do. He has to commit his ultimate in order to do so, but that was really heroic from him. Loses half of his health, but what could have been an opportunity is just completely denied. And D-plus now looking to siege. Yeah, and it's a lot like of confidence from aiming right there. Not enough champions here to stand up to the push. Yeah, it, it, it feels like such a game of, of patience here. D plus having these small edges, but they're not going to overcommit. They're not going to, to to toss this game off of a flip of a fight where they're looking for Showmaker to scoop in and look for an ultimate. They're just happy to take these small incremental advantages. They'll take a mid inner. Morgan will take top outer. We know which one of those is more relevant. Aiming to grab red buff for his team here at 32 minutes into the game. 
And we're just going to kind of reset here and look for the next objective fight. This Jax needs to be able to get something done here. But like you said, the Poppy is just such a brick wall to break through that by the time he tries to put pressure on these outers, the rest of the team can rotate over to assist. They have too much map control. Uh, maybe can match Showmaker on the bottom side. You see a fight over the blue buff, and it is going to go the way of Bro, I believe, but the engage here is quite strong. Karis in a lot of trouble. The timing is good, and that is a free Azir. Just going to go the way yeah. of D plus. I mean, that might be an opened up inhibitor here. Showmaker doing a party ult. <laughs> Look at King, and he's like, okay, you Timing is good, and that is a free Azir. Look at Showmaker. Go like, I'm here, and I'm ulting. I mean, that might be <laughs> Let me get rid of this piece of shit. Azir ult. <laughs> Look at King, and he's like, okay, you don't have Azir. Now I can just walk in a forum. Sorry, I'd rather have this Sejuani ult instead. Ezreal just doesn't have the damage to, to hurt this Poppy. It could wear King and down a little bit, but just going to be true shot to try to clear the wave to keep this inhibitor turret alive. Kellen going to try to set this one up once again. The Bard ultimate does delay and buy some time. Right, look, look at that value. He actually did get great value by ditching it all, ditching the, uh, the Azir ult. But he is going to survive here as the siege on the inhibitor. This is without Baron. Mind you, and it's the mid inhibitor, inhibitor gonna go the way of DK. With that cannon minion surviving, you know, they have enough pushing power to just knock it down. And once the turret's down, they have the damage to take. Oh, this game has been here. extremely boring, guys. And Karas is over here to try to help. Maybe the. It's just saw on the numbers. Aiming 3,000 plus gold ahead of his counterpart on the other side. So I mean, I'm not even sure really Ocean Soul is going to be very valuable for Brian here. Even if they get it, it still feels super doomed for them. Happen at some point, if Bro can even you know force one of these 5v5 fights, as they're waiting around the Sun Disc, it's pretty strong now. But you see that DK not really scared to step up to it as a team. Okay, Lucid scouted by this ward. See if they can try to punish him again. Gideon on it. Lucid will respect. As this Drake is spawning in 20 seconds here. He's kicking in. Okay, well, they know he's here, but he doesn't care. Just going to press the R button, not the car. Respect. As this Drake is spawning in 20 seconds here. He's kicking in. Okay, well, they know he's here, but he doesn't care. Right, this is a good setup on the play care. by Lucid, right? Just going to press the R button, not the car. It's just a celebration for DK. And that's just zero damage. I mean, Karis in the front just getting our button. It's a good setup by Lucid. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's never going to go your way if yeah. that keeps happening. I mean, it, they weren't ready to follow up on catching Lucid this time. I mean, Gideon was there. He was exactly where he needed to be. But the rest of the, the problem it really is that who kills Poppy right now, right? Way too overextended. Especially now that Poppy's starting to build some MR. Here, and that is going to be the third dragon now. Go is there. Karpi plus. And you can see it in this moment here, how far up he is. They knew where Vi was. She can engage over that wall. And it's just either a miscommunication or the game sense isn't there. Karas tunnels a little bit. And you can see Envy is just completely denied. Yeah, Karas should it. not have been up that he far. They didn't have any vision on Vi any longer. Yeah, and that could have been even worse. They didn't know where Poppy was. chains onto a very low health Morgan. We saw Lucid trying to follow up on that. They elected to just go take the Drake instead after the follow up engage didn't come through. Like, that could have been a complete white nearly. As Get in. Now, somebody's got to check it. He goes in. He's going to flash. That's just another objective, essentially. A small one taken by DK. He's just doing his job. He can't let them take out. He's feeling like going through. Feels like solo queue. Where yeah. Like you don't have a lot going on so you just try to group up in mid as now it's just a dead bard he's just 100 to 0 the burst showing through feels like solo queue it's going to be the end of effort doesn't even have time to flash journey which you've gotten out of a uh, showmaker is just monstrous game, right now game, but when you're this far behind and you're a squishy enchanter support you don't want to be the one who has to check you don't want to be the one who's trying to come out there and clear vision but you've got no choice game in, in all regards right now Oh, They're boy. actually doing a good job of setting picks now. This is what's causing D plus to win. They finally have a coherent game plan. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Oh, Morgan lives. As well as the lives. What? Oh, Morgan lives. What? As the jacks can be pretty incredible sometimes. Does get away, and it's not going to amount to too much. We'll lose a lot more map control, and uh, to try to avoid mistakes here. D plus, you should be able to wear down some more of this base. Yeah. Lucid, pretty tanky in his own right, has the recurrent, has a frozen heart from his second item. And, ooh, Karis 
Not getting engaged upon this time, but aiming nearly takes him down anyway. Uh, he's got to be so cautious here. Oh, boy. This is really <laughs> tough. Yeah. Gideon throws one to the winds. Yeah. Just a bit desperate. It feels like at this point, D plus a very clean second half of the game, you could say, as the Poppy Ultimate trying to buy some time, trying to create some space. Just going to hold on to it. Take down the second I don't really feel very confident about D plus after seeing these really games, safe. though, guys. Like, they don't Except seem to really like have, have a bunch of fix their main shot calling issues. And the early game was pretty, pretty rough. You know, some of these dives were kind of painful. But Breon also just doesn't have a lot going on. Like, who is actually going to win games for this team now? It's just Morgan, man. Presses his R1 and he's just running away. King in and Showmaker now. With a bunch of I think Ugdi was really important to this team. So incredibly tanky. You can't kill this Poppy. It's not going to happen. The Ember's Divide comes through, but the damage follow up is not there. And slowly but surely. <laughs> DK versus KT. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot of faith in KT either. I think that Therax is just a very bad team. We'll take the series 2 to 0. Very dominant performance here from Deep Plus. What the heck? Mid game 0. Very dominant performance here from Deep Plus. <laughs> what the heck is that? The series two to zero. Very dom <laughs> dominant performance here from Deep Plus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Take the series two to zero. How do you do that? Very is it just because you're recalled and then you use Zodias and it Deep spins Plus you? <laughs> post mid game, <laughs> back to back, finding the picks they needed in order That's to funny. scoop up objectives and close out the game. Patient when they needed to be around those dragons. Love the decision making to avoid. Some it's a Silas thing. How do you do it? This turret up in mid. Sure, they made the mistake the first time, but the second time they didn't. 